Hi, I had a phone call from a fella last week. He has a new tone IM4406, just like this one. The story he told me was the system was installed around 1997. He never really had any problems with it at all whatsoever. It always worked well, he said, and he enjoyed having it. During that week, they had a neighborhood power outage and the power was out for three or four hours. When the power came back on, the 4406 didn't come back on. It was dead. He thought that was kind of unusual. He didn't have any other problems with anything else in his house. So he did a little bit of investigating and what he found was the two transformers that power the 4406 weren't putting out any voltage. Now I've made videos in the past and I'm gonna link some of them in up here in those little pop-up tags that you can watch about the 801T transformers that power the 4406. 801Ts are big transformers. They're 18 volts at 78 watts each. So it's a lot of power in these. And because of that, built inside of these, they have internal fuses on the outputs. So if the fuse blows, the output goes dead. The 120 volt side is fine, but no output any longer. So the fellow that called me, he had a voltmeter and he checked the voltage on his two 801Ts and they were essentially zero. And he tried it with the 4406 connected to them and with the 4406 disconnected from them and they were still zero, so obviously the fuses had blown. He did also take the transformers out of the mounting can in the wall housing behind the master station just to check and make sure that they did have 120 volts coming into them and they did. He called me because he had seen our video, again there'll be a pop-up here somewhere, about how we can open these up, replace the fuses inside of them, close them back up, and they work as good as new. And that's what he was interested in having done. This type of situation presents a dilemma. It's kind of that chicken and egg thing, although maybe not really. The question is, the thing that comes to mind if you think about this is, did the power outage somehow damage both transformers and that's why the fuses went dead? Or did the power outage, when the power came back on, when the power was restored, did it create some kind of fault in the master station and the master station overloaded the transformers and blew the fuses? And those are really two separate and different things. And the reason it's important to know that is, to figure it out, is because if you repair a set of transformers that have blown fuses and you reinstall them and you reconnect a master station, a 4406, that has some kind of internal flaw or fault in it, all it's gonna do when you flip the breaker back on, it's gonna blow the fuses again. And then you're right back to where you started other than the money you're out for having them fixed the first go around. When we face this dilemma on service calls and things, I have a workaround that I do because for testing purposes only, I have a pair of 801Ts that have no fuses. They're mounted on an electrical junction box with a power cord and we simply temporarily plug them in, hook them up to the 4406 and measure the voltage. Since there's no fuses, there's nothing to blow. If there's a fault with the master station, it will drag the voltage down on the transformers. But this whole process, we're talking about a minute and a half or two minutes. So it's completely safe. It's a good troubleshooting method. But all of you folks that have 4406s, you don't have a setup like that. You don't have extra transformers to play around with and use as testing devices. So you need a different and easier way that you can actually figure it out before you put your repair transformers back in. And there's actually a fairly easy way to do this that's fairly reliable. So let's move these out of the way and take a look at our 4406. If we turn this around on the back, you have this big assembly on the back of the unit. It's got the big finned aluminum heat sink. It's screwed onto the back of the unit with six screws, or two, four, six, seven screws actually. And down here, these red and white wires down here, these are the wires that get connected to the transformers. These are the power wires. And the power wires feed the primary power supply, which is in this section of the power module. So if there's going to be a fault, 
that will overload the transformers and blow the fuse, it is most likely, 90, probably 5% of the time, it's going to be somewhere on this board in this area in here. So I'm going to show you how you can check and see what the likelihood of a failed power supply is before you connect it to your newly repaired transformers. To make this a little bit easier to show you, we're going to use this. This is my shop 4406 power module. This came out of some unit I got years ago. See, it's even got my sticker on it shows that I own it. It's the one that belongs to the shop. And we use this for testing purposes when we repair 4406s for different problems and things because it's easier to have a known good working one than it is to have to repair the one in the customer's unit before you find out all of the other horrible things that went wrong with it because their house got hit by lightning or something like that. So this is standard power module 4406. Nothing special, no changes, out of the box just like it was when it was brand new. And here are our two red and white wires that would get hooked up to transformers. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna show you how you can measure with a multimeter the resistance of these pairs of wires to give you some indication whether or not this has a flaw. Here's our setup. We're looking at the Agilent 344618 multimeter. It's on two wire resistance mode, which is ohms. It's on auto scaling, so it's gonna scale for us to the right range of reading so we can see easily. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my probes here and I'm gonna connect them to the red and white wires on the power module one set at a time to see what the resistance measurement is on the lines. When you do this, you have to have the red and white wires disconnected from the transformers. You cannot have any power in a device when you're measuring resistance. It has to be shut off completely and disconnected from the power. Otherwise, you won't get a proper reading or you'll blow up your multimeter. And let's not do that. So we'll go ahead and we'll do set number one first. These are the ones on the outer corner of the power module board. And when we put the probes on the wires, we have 38, 39, thousand ohms. You can see next to the ohm symbol, it says K ohms. K is for a thousand, so it's 40,000 ohms, give or take, because it will change a little bit because it's a good multimeter. It's very sensitive. Now we'll do the other pair, and here we have 40.6789 41,000 ohms. It will go up sometimes on its own like this because it puts a little bit of voltage into the circuit that the wires are connected to and it may be charging up a capacitor or something and that changes the resistance but it doesn't really matter we're just looking for a general reading which is about 40,000 ohms that's what a good power module should read to make this measurement relevant to you you have to understand about when you do resistance measurements right now the probes are not touching anything. Here they are separated from each other and the multimeter shows overload. It's no resistance, no measurements being made because the probes are not connected to anything. Some multimeters, if you have a handheld one, it'll say OL for over limit or overload. It just means nothing's being measured. It's not measuring any resistance whatsoever. As opposed to when you have a dead short, and what dead short is, we're gonna take the probes and we're gonna to touch the probe leads together like this. And now look what the measurement is. It's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0.1 ohms. It's one tenth of one ohm. It's a dead short. That what it's actually measuring is, it's measuring the resistance of the leads, the red and black wires, because this is a very sensitive multimeter and it can measure really, really low values like the resistance of the leads. What you don't want, remember, when you blow a fuse, it's because there's been a dead short across the output terminals or screws of the transformers, and that's what overloaded the fuse and caused it to blow. Here is our sample IM4406, the one that was in the beginning of the video, and we're gonna measure the leads on this one. Now, this set came from a customer who sent it to me all the way from Hawaii and his house got a big hit of lightning on it. The intercom, along with a lot of other electronics in his house, blew up. He sent it to me to see what it would take to get it fixed, 
and unfortunately in this case it is so severely damaged there are actually small components inside the set that are actually exploded from the lightning that this set was deemed beyond repair that was his choice not mine I probably could have fixed it but he didn't want to spend the money on it so we're gonna measure this one to see what condition the power supply in the power module is compared to the other one. This time you get to see me to measure the wires and I'm gonna tell you what the meter says because I can't get them both in one shot. So we'll start with this pair right here and we'll go ahead and hook our test leads up to the wires. And this pair reads 2.0 million ohms. So we were measuring thousand ohms before we had 40,000 ohms now we have 2 million ohms 2 million is a whole lot more than 40,000 so what does that tell me that tells me that most likely some components in the power supply of the power module in here something has failed completely possibly has burnt up and that component is now open. There's no connection through the component so you're not reading anything beyond that component. You're only measuring things that are in front of it and there isn't probably much in front of it so it's measuring 2 million ohms. 2 million ohms in some respects is not as bad as 0 ohms as a dead short because it's not going to overload the transformers but the set's not going to work. So now we'll measure this pair, same way, touch the probes onto the wires, and this pair reads 35, 36 thousand ohms, 36 K ohms. So this line is probably good. Whatever these wires lead to inside the power module here are probably intact, and that part of it probably is okay. This one very something is very damaged so this is one really sick 4406 and just for laughs because we're measuring things today here are our two 801t transformers now are these 801t's any good i don't really know i grabbed these out of our tub of 801t's this morning to make this video with and these are both used ones because the paper tape that was across the screws has been removed so these obviously have been installed at some point in their lives so are they any good or not I don't really know. So what you do is you can measure across these, across the screw terminals, to see if the fuse is good or not. Now, when you do this, remember, you must not have power in the device. The circuit breaker must be turned off to these so they are shut off completely. Otherwise, your reading will be wrong and your multimeter may blow up. So if we measure across these, if the fuse is good, it should read close to zero and indeed it reads four tenths of one ohm which is pretty close to zero that's almost exactly the same measurement i got when i touched the two leads together like this this one also 0.4 ohms four tenths of one ohm so the fuses in these two transformers they're good thumbs up good fuses that's always good so these two are fine so let's do a brief recap and review what we've learned. If you have a Newtone IM or IMA 4406 intercom system and suddenly one day it goes dead and you open it up and figure out that you can measure the output, the voltage from the two transformers and your two transformers both read zero volts, that means the fuses inside the transformers have blown out and the output is now dead. So you're going to get the transformers repaired because that's the sensible thing to do. But you're worried that when you put them back in, maybe you have a problem with your 4406. Maybe there's something really wrong with it. And that's what caused the fuse in the transformers to blow. So you're going to do the smart thing. You're going to buy a multimeter or maybe borrow one from a friend or your brother who owes you money probably. And you're going to measure the resistance on the two sets of transformer wires. Those are the red and white wires. So you're going to put your multimeter on resistance measurement. They're not, the wires are not going to be connected to anything because you can't have any power. And when you measure the resistance between each pair of wires, what you're looking for is something around 40,000 ohms. It could be 35, it could be 45. Those are all okay measurements because there'll be some variation from set to set, but that's a ballpark range that's certainly fine. So that one was good. We'll measure this one. 
that one's good also. So we know this power module is good. If when you measure these wires, you get some crazy measurement like 470 million ohms, that means you've got some problem in here that may or may not have blown the fuse in the transformer. Or when you measure this, if you do this and you measure one ohm or a half of an ohm, 0.5 ohms, or you measure 10 ohms, you measure something way, way, way close to zero from 40,000, you got a problem in here. And when you, if, and if you just hook this back up and turn the power back on, you're gonna blow the fuse again, and then you're gonna have to get the transformer fixed again. And that's the ins and outs of how you can check your new tone 4406 master station if you have blown fuses in your 801T transformers and you're not sure why. Oh, look who's back. It's Harvey. Harvey's been gone for a while. And as you can see, he's gone native. But more about that next week in our year-end wrap-up video. I hope you found this video to be interesting and helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube because that helps us just a little bit. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell, and when you click on the bell, click on it to receive all notifications. And every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.